Hello and welcome everybody to another session of Three Things Thursday. Um, today we're going to talk about Medicaid waivers. What are they? Um, basically like the who, what, why of Medicaid waivers. Um, as you know, this whole month we've been doing sessions on Medicaid and different things about the basics of Medicaid. Um, so why Medicaid waivers or why the word waiver uh, included in there? So to waive means basically as you know, just the definition of it is to refrain or to disregard or to ignore, overlook or set aside, kind of like an example, like her tuition fees would be waived. So something is uh, kind of removed or disregarded. That's what the word waivers mean. And in this particular instance, when you're talking about waive, the word waive, basically um, we are waiving certain Medicaid program requirements. That's why the word waive comes from. The federal government waives certain Medicaid program requirements. And so that gives the waiver a lot more flexibility. So the, for instance, um, through these waivers, the state can limit it to certain geographical area. They can say that we're gonna provide Medicaid waivers to people in South Georgia, or they can say we're gonna provide um, uh, Medicaid waivers to uh, you know, people with intellectual disabilities, or they can say that we can, um, you're gonna provide uh, waivers to only a certain groups of people or people who um, you know, uh, live in certain parts of the state. So, there, those are some of the rules of Medicaid that, that are waived um, by the federal government. And that's why the word waiver is included in there. And when we're talking about waivers, we're talking about home and community-based service waivers. That's the one we're talking about. That's where the word waive comes from. And then what is the purpose of these Medicaid waivers? The primary purpose of this is to make sure that people with disabilities or chronic health conditions can continue to live in their own homes and communities. So for instance, if somebody needs help with assistance with um, bathing or meal prep, or um, you know, being able to go into the community um, and they need assistance with that, they need help, somebody has to help them with those things. Instead of moving them to an institution, which would be like a nursing home or a hospital, if Medicaid would pay for somebody to come into their homes and provide those services, then that individual can continue to live in their home and community. And that's the kind of, that's the purpose, the main purpose of Medicaid waivers is to continue to keep people in their homes and their communities. And we know, you know, just from common sense too, we know that if a person lives in their community and lives in their own home, their um, health outcomes are going to be much better. Um, they're going to have a supportive environment around them. They're not going to be as isolated if they're going to be in an institution or in a hospital or a nursing home. So keeping people um, in their homes, people with disabilities and chronic health conditions, uh, allowing them to continue to live in their homes and providing them with the resources and the aids that they would need to continue to live in their homes is also very cost effective. It is cheaper to have somebody pay for somebody to be in your home and provide those services rather than the cost of hospitalization. So there are lots of purposes, but though that's kind of like the main purpose of Medicaid waivers. And we're, as we said, we were talking about home and community-based service waivers. So basically it's, um, it falls under the federal law section 1915C of the Social Security Act. Basically it says it allows states to cover services for individuals with disabilities to stay in their homes and be a part of the community. And the key word here is allows, which means that it's not mandated that every state has home and community-based waivers services, um, but it allows states to have that as an option. So states can choose to participate. And um, right now all states have the home and community-based services, but they might be called different in each state because each state can write their own plan. They can write what services they're gonna cover under that plan. And then that plan is submitted to the federal government and the federal government approves or, um, or, provide, or uh, you know, approves that plan. And that's when the states can then implement the services from that plan. And that's another reason why this is not transferable. So if you are in Georgia right now and you have the NALCOMP waiver or the CCSP waiver and 
you plan to move to Florida, you would have to start from scratch because the waivers don't transfer from one state to the next, because as you can see, every state writes their own plan. And then every state, uh, depending on what's in their plan, the services might differ. And so you can't move from state to state and just transfer it. Um, you would have to reapply. Here are some other things to think about when you think about the uh, home and community-based service waivers. So like I said, some states provide more services, some states plans provide less services, some states have more funding, and it totally is up to the state. It varies, their funding levels vary from state to state. The other key part to remember is it's not an entitlement program. That's why you have wait lists. What do you mean by the word entitlement? So I think a good example would be of an entitlement program would be, say, getting your driver's license. So if you pass the test and um, the written test and the driver's test, then you become eligible to receive a driver's license. The state of Georgia can't come and tell you that we're issuing only 50,000 driver's licenses this year. And so you are, uh, we've already hit our maximum limit, so we can't provide you with a driver's license. So although you're eligible, you still can't get a license because it's an entitlement program. If it were a non-entitlement program, then the state can put a cap on it and say, we're going to do only this many slots, or we are going to have only this much, this many people approved for this program this year. And so that's why the home and community-based waivers have wait lists, because there is a cap and there is the state can say how many people they're going to serve this particular year. And so if you are the person who's applying after that, then you might you know, you might still be eligible, you might meet all the requirements, but you still may not get funding or you may not get the services for that program because it's not an entitlement program. And the last but important thing is that in order to provide these um, services, the services provided under the home and community-based um, waiver are additional services, like in addition to what Medicaid typically provides. So say if your child or young adult has Medicaid, like it could be Katie Beckett Medicaid, or it could be a Mary Group Medicaid, or it could be low income Medicaid, whatever type of Medicaid they have, they get the same services if they're under the age of 21, which is um, doctor's appointments, prescriptions. Um, if they're under the age of 21, they get therapy services. You know, those things are covered under Medicaid. But in order to get a home and community-based service waiver, the individual needs additional services, needs to have, require additional services. So it could be that the individual might need assistance getting into the community. It might be that the individual needs behavioral supports, which means that maybe caregivers and people who are um, working with the individual need to be trained on uh, behavior management. Um, so those are some additional, or the individual might need some pre-employment skills and so supported employment is one of the services that is offered through uh, home and community-based waivers. So essentially the person needs to have, require additional services above what Medicaid typically provides. And that's what is covered under the home and, uh, and community-based services. In the, next, uh, uh, in the next session next week, we will cover some of those services more in detail, but I just wanted to give you, what is a home and community-based waiver? why is the word waiver used and why are they waiting lists? Um, so I hope this gives you some idea as to uh, what is a, a Medicaid waiver. So as I said, next week, we're gonna talk about the different um, types of Medicaid waivers here in Georgia. We have three types, we'll talk about them and talk about the eligibility requirements. And we'll also talk about how you can apply. So I hope this was informative. And thank you once again for joining us for our Three Things Thursday. And as always, um, Medicaid is a complex, um, uh, you know, it's very complicated and hard to navigate. So if you have questions or concerns or uh, you're considering applying for a Medicaid waiver, feel free to call us. Um, we can definitely help you or go to our website and you can reach us that way too. So thank you all and uh, for joining us today and we hope to see you next week.